going to talk about uh, stability and uh, invertibility and inverse systems so let us start with uh, stability okay so stability is another important uh, system property okay so unless you want uh, on an oscillator or a digital oscillator or continuous time oscillator all digital systems to be useful have to be stable there is no other way so informally a stable system is one in which small inputs small inputs lead to response that do not diverge okay so for example consider a pendulum so let me show you the figure pictures present this one here i go okay so this is a figure shown here the pendulum is here now initially it was in the vertical direction okay so in which uh, the input is applied uh, input is the applied force this is the input x of t x of t is the input and this is nothing but the applied force you apply a force so that it starts to move and the output is the angular deviation this one y of t this is the output and that is nothing but angular deviation right now uh, the output is the angular deviation from the vertical line this is the vertical line okay so in this case the gravity applies a restoring force the moment you apply some force um, then what happens the pendulum moves upwards and due to this gravity it uh, comes back to the vertical position okay therefore the gravity applies a restoring force because of that the pendulum tends to return to its vertical position okay and uh, friction losses due to drag tend to slow it down because of the you know friction it has because of the friction force it slowly maybe it comes here and the next swing it comes here and the next swing it comes here slowly it comes and finally it reaches to the vertical position because of the you know friction losses now if a small force is applied the resulting deflection from the vertical will also be small if you apply a small force then the deflection will be will also be small now in contrast for the inverted pendulum you take the pendulum like this you just keep it in the vertical position position somehow so that like this vertical position now what will happen see this is a inverted pendulum okay the effect of gravity is to apply a force that tends to increase a deviation from vertical okay so therefore what happens even if you apply a small force that leads to a large vertical deflection okay it suddenly comes down here the moment you apply very very small force you apply either side very small force that small force is enough so that you will get a large deflection large vertical deflection okay therefore causing that the pendulum to topple over so the pendulum will be toppled okay despite any retarding force due to friction even if there is some even it has some friction force but that will not help us here okay so such a systems are called uh, unstable systems because for small input it gives large output such a systems are called uh, unstable systems as long as the input is small the output also small then such a systems are called uh, stable system
even you can give some more examples also like um, you know population growth with uh, unlimited food supplies and no predators or examples of unstable system for example in the society if there is no cat then rat population will keep on increases so it is a unstable system in the agricultural field agricultural field then if there is no snake then rat population also will increase similarly in the forest if no lion or uh, or tiger or like you no know, herbivorous animal then carnivorous animal sorry if there is no carnivorous animal then herbivorous animal populations will keep on increases so these these are some examples of unstable systems like there are uh, numerous examples of uh, you know stable system so stability of physical systems generally result from the presence of mechanism that dissipate energy for example you take the same example like rc circuit like this capacitor resistor current flowing through the circuit i of t is i of t and this is my v of t and plus and minus okay so here uh, the circuit contains uh, you know r and c the resistor dissipates energy it is a passive device whereas the capacitor stores the energy so this circuit is a stable system okay so therefore the definition is as follows more formally if the input to a stable system is bounded see the my system is let's say stable system now let us call this is input and this input is bounded bounded input and produces bounded output then the system is called a stable system for that the system should be first of all stable if the system is unstable then what will happen happen even if you give bounded input it will not produce a bounded output so more formally if the input to a stable system is bounded bounded in the sense its magnitude is does not grow without bound magnitude does not grow without bound that's what we mean by bounded input then the output must also be bounded and therefore cannot diverge so it cannot diverge so this happens only when the system is stable okay so therefore a stability that we bother about in uh, signals and systems or um, digital signal processing is the so called bi bo stability bi means bounded input and bo means bounded output so as long as the input is bounded and uh, the output also bounded then you can say that system is bibo stable system so the formal definition is a a continuous time system or a discrete time system is stable if and only if mod of x of t that is magnitude of x of t is bounded by some positive number let's say bx and this is finite number less than infinity for all values of t then this implies the y of t is also bounded by some positive value let's say by which is less than infinity for all values of time so this is the definition for continuous time system the same definition you can take for uh, digital systems like uh, x of n magnitude of x of n less than some number let's say bx again some positive number which is less than infinity for all values of n then this implies if you give it to an input uh, input if you give it to a system then y of n is also bounded by a number positive number which is a finite quantity that is why this infinity comes less than infinity for all values of <coughs> 
for all values of n. Okay, so a digital system is stable if and only if a bounded input x of n less than bx, which is uh, less than infinity. Okay, so a bounded signal is the one which is less than a certain number. Okay, so which is less than infinity for all n. If this implies, then the output y of n is also y of n is all y of n is also less than some other number let us say by which is also less than infinity. That is if the input signal or input sequence is bounded the output signal or output sequence should also be bounded. Okay. Now, let us consider some examples very simple examples. Now, let me take y of n is equal to 1 over n, n square is it bounded? No because when when you apply n is equal to 0 then y of n becomes infinity therefore this is not a stable system it is unstable system so the input is bounded see 0 is a finite right 0 is a finite quantity what about output that is input is finite quantity input is finite that means bounded input leads to unbounded output unbounded output therefore the system is unstable okay now let us take one more example like a moving average system y of n is equal to 1 over m sigma k is equal to 0 to m minus 1 x of n minus k so i am taking the average now if x of n is bounded mod of x of n is bounded then is uh, now the question is is y of n bounded yes it is bounded let us let us check whether it is bounded or not <coughs> okay so this is less than mod of x of n is less than say some number bx let us assume then what about y of n magnitude this is equal to magnitude of 1 over m sigma k is equal to 0 to infinity x of sorry this uh, magnitude will not come mm, x of n magnitude then this is going to be 1 over m it is a constant then k equal to 0 to infinity like this for each if we expand this then 1 over m sigma k is equal to 0 to it is not infinity sorry this is m minus 1 it is a moving average system you are taking m sample and averaging it that is why you put m here. Okay. So, see there is m here and m minus 1 0 to m minus 1 that means what you are taking m samples. So, this is uh, x of n mm. now you expand this if you expand then 1 over m then x of 0 modulus plus x of 1 modulus if you take if you bring modulus inside then it may be less than or equal to ok. So, plus x of 2 plus up to dot 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 plus x of m minus 1 right. Now, we said uh, this uh, input is bounded for all values of n that is what we said right as per the definition the input is bounded bounded for all values of n. Therefore, let us assume this x of 0 is bounded and the bounded value is b x and this also b x this also b x and so on. So, how many b x s are there m number of b x s therefore, 1 over m m times b x and this m and m will get cancelled again you will get b x therefore, mod of y of n is less than or equal to b x therefore, we assumed b x is less than infinity therefore, y of n is also less than infinity therefore, as long as the input is bounded the output is bounded therefore, the system is a stable system. Okay, here I have written the less than or equal to symbol look at here why did I write 
because I can replace all of them by their uppermost value. I have taken the you know magnitude. That's why. So it is. It is. It gives the up, upper bound. Uppermost value. Because even if it is negative, I'm adding no. That's why. Even then, it doesn't exceed B X. Therefore, it is a bounded input and bounded output term. Stable system. Now let me take one more example. Now my case is like y of n is equal to sigma k is equal to zero to infinity x of n minus k. What is this? This is an accumulator. It accumulates all the sample right from k is equal to zero to infinity. So now the question is: Is it a stable system? The answer is no. Why? Because there are infinite number of samples, and each sample has finite value. What is our assumption? B I B O stable. That means my input x of n is finite with certain number x. Okay, finite quantity. Now what you are doing? You are adding infinite number of positive quantities, finite quantities, up to infinite. So therefore, it my output y of n leads to an infinite value. Therefore. An accumulator is, you know, unstable system. <coughs> x of n is. See, the input is bounded. The output is bounded to go to infinity, as n goes to infinity. So this is an unstable system. So, so that's it about uh, stability of the system, stable and unstable. Now let us. Uh, Talk about invertibility and um, inverse system. This also important. <coughs> invertibility and uh, inverse systems. A system is said to be invertible if uh, distinct inputs leads to lead to distinct outputs. inputs lead lead to distinct outputs you will uh, understand better by considering example okay for example if i consider y of t is equal to 2 times uh, x of t now what happens if we give x of t it gives rise to 2 times x of t Okay, if I give a uh, let's say <coughs> x one of one battery, we'll consider a, you know anything. It's this also okay. Mm. If uh, x one of is given, then it is multiplied by two. If uh, two times of x one x of one. If you sub supply x of two, then also it is two times x of two. So, for um, every distinct input x of one, I am getting two times of x of one. If I apply x of two, I am getting two times of x of two. On the other hand, my system is like this: y of t is equal to x squared of t. Now, what will happen if you apply x of one? Then I will get a x uh, x squared of one. If I apply x of two, then I will get a x squared of two. No problem. The distinct input gives distinct output here. Similarly, the distinct input x of two gives x squared of two. But the problem is, if you give minus of x of one, then what will happen? Again, this becomes minus x of one, the whole square, right? So this is going to be again x squared of one. Now there is no distinct output. See for uh, This input as well as this input, it is giving the same output. So the inputs are distinct, but the outputs are not distinct. Such a systems are called a not invertible systems. So that's what we mean by invertibility. So as long as the inputs are distinct and outputs also distinct, then you call that systems are invertible systems. Okay. So therefore, if the Let us consider a discrete time system. 
let's say the input is x of n and uh, give it to a system if it is invertible then you can get back again right then let me call this is uh, you know y of n and this y of n you give to the inverse system so if it inverses then you'll get back y of n that is equal to x of n such a systems are called a inverse system okay this is called a invertible system like say you have an input that input is mul multiplied by 2 when i say 2 times of x of n what do i mean i am amplifying the signal by 2 amplifying the signal by 2 units now if i want to get back to x of n what will i do you just multiply by 1 by 2 instead of amplification you do the attenuation okay 1 by you multiply 1 by 2 of this uh, 2 times x of n then this 2 2 will get cancelled you get x of n therefore the first system multiplies by 2 you will get 2 times x of n and the second system multiplies by 1 half then again you will get back your x of t so these are called invertible systems so you can get back your x of t at any point of time such a systems are called invertible systems that's what very simple concept okay thus a series interconnection of you know the system and its inverse system will give the you know same input in the continuous time case you can take y of t is equal to 2 times x of t then uh, w of t is equal to i mean this is my w of t w of t is equal to again 1 by 2 times your y of t y of t is equal to um, 2 times 1 half times x of t therefore these two will get cancelled therefore my output is the same as the input therefore i can achieve the invertibility now another example of the inv invertible system is an accumulator we know the accumulator formula accumulator uh, general form or summer i already discussed this in one of the previous lecture accumulator or uh, summer or summer okay so the accumulator is written as y of n is equal to sigma k is equal to minus infinity to n x of k now <coughs> this also an inverse system like uh, if you multiply y of n minus y of sorry if you take y of n and minus y of n minus 1 that will gives to you w of n and that w of n is nothing but x of n this you can simply you can prove by taking simple example let's say this is your signal and 0 at 0 you have the magnitude of 1 2 1 1.5 like this and here 1 1 2 like that dot 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 it goes up to infinity so this is simple example you can take it and this is n 1 2 3 and you can take 4 again you take one value like this okay now what you do is let's say i'm taking y of 2 what is y of 2 you sum over all the values right from k is equal to 0 to 2 then then x of k that means you start from infinity x of infinity plus all the way up to x of 0 plus x of 1 plus x of 2 right this is my y of 2 now you take y of 1 y of 1 again summation k is equal to infinity to 1 x of k which is uh, x of infinity plus dot 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 
plus uh, x of 0 plus x of 1 you stop up to x of 1 because the upper limit of the summation is 1. <coughs> now, you substitute y of 2 minus y of 1 is equal to term by term you can subtract this term will get cancelled with this guy and uh, like all other terms x 0 with x 0 x 1 with the uh, x 1 you will left with only x of 2. So, therefore, this is x of 2. So, y 2 of y of 2 minus y of 1 is equal to x of 2. Now, what is this? Mm, in general, I can say instead of 2 let me put n minus instead of 1 I, let me put y of n minus 1 2 minus 1 1 which is equal to x of n. Therefore, <coughs> the system I can write like this input is x of n here I have accumulator the accumulator is like this k equal to k is equal to um, infinity minus infinity minus infinity to n x of k right like this and the inverse of this system is going to be y of n minus y of n minus 1 what you will get here you will get w of n and that w of n is going to be what x of n that is all. So, this is the inverse system for this accumulator ok. So, let me stop uh, at this point. So, that is all about uh, the inverse systems ok. So, thank you very much.